those that are watching from near and far, so appreciate you. Deuteronomy 25. So if you miss service, you can always rewatch it. Verse 17. Um, it says this, remember that the Amalekites did, remember what the Amalekites did to you along the way when you came out of Egypt. When you were weary and worn out, they met you on your journey and attacked all who were lagging behind. They had no fear of God. Remember what the Amalekites did to you along the way when you came out of Egypt. They were, when you were weary and worn out, they met you along your journey and attacked all who were lagging behind. I want to minister for just a few minutes of time a prophetic thought that I believe God is sharing to our church. It is sometimes God will give you a message to where you're looking at a passage of scripture and you're breaking it down, helping people see truths within the scripture that they probably not had seen before. Or sometimes you're teaching a message that God has said is on the heart of his for his people. And he knows and wants you to deliver what he knows they're feeling. And he wants you to let them know his perspective on it. And this morning, that's what I want to talk to you about. Is I want to talk to you about this idea of supernatural stamina. Luke 18 verse 1 says, men ought to always pray. And if I was subtitling, I'd talk, let's take a seat. So men ought to always pray and not faint is the translation in King James. The NIV says men ought to always pray and not give up, which is very important for you and I to understand and to know because it is letting us know that God requires us to learn how to keep going to him even when it seems like he hasn't responded right away. And because we live in a generation that is a microcosm of needing things to happen quick, fast, and in a hurry, we oftentimes view prayer the same way. Is if God doesn't do it when I want him to do it, then there's no need for me to utilize this tool that he's given me called prayer. And this is why it's important that you and I ask God for supernatural stamina. It is Thomas Edison who wrote in 1921, we don't know the millionth part of 1% about anything. We don't know what water is. We don't know what light is. We don't know what gravitation is. We don't know what enables us to keep our feet when we stand up. We don't know what electricity is. We don't know what heat is. We don't know anything about magnetism. We have a lot of hypothesis about these things, but that is all. But we do not let our ignorance about all these things deprive us of their use. And it is the same with prayer. You may not understand it. You may not be able to rationalize how it all works. When I talk to God, how is he listening? How is he responding? It doesn't mean because we don't understand it, we don't use it. And here is what uh, uh, I think is so important. There are times in our spiritual walk with God that we get so fatigued that we stop praying and we just don't communicate with God like we should. And what I'm asking you to start praying is not just asking God for X, Y, Z and all these things. Sometimes you just need to ask God, God, give me the stamina to keep on going to you even when it seems like I haven't seen you respond. And most of us in this generation, unfortunately, haven't seen endurance. When I look at my mom and dad who are here today, before my dad was a Christian, my mom prayed for 27 years for him to become converted. That's a long time going to God for someone's soul. And after one year, not getting tired and still going to God, it is what we need in our generation and in our culture. It is called the stamina of prayer. It is the ability to keep on enduring even after we feel tired. Satan is a mastermind in Luke chapter number 18. 
It is a parable about a woman who keeps on being persistent to a judge and keeps saying, judge, you need to answer me. And the judge says, because you keep on persisting, I will give you the answer. And it's talking about the idea of how we should always go to God. We should not just go to God on occasions. We should consistently go to God. And who those of us who are persistent will see the manifestation of of God in our lives. And let me help you understand, just because God said no to your prayer request doesn't mean that prayers are not effective. Remember, I told you that God says yes, no, and wait. And there are times where God says no and we don't understand it. And then we don't get it until 20 years down the road. There are also times where God says no and it breaks our heart. And we don't realize it until we go further along in our journey of faith than we realize what God was doing all along. The thing about God is this, is that prayer is a communication tool that he has given us. And what the Amalekites were doing very successfully was that they only attacked God's people when they were tired. They did not fight them when they had strength. They fought them when they were tired, and they fought them when they were getting to the place of being burdened down. And most of you are not getting fought when you have strength. You are feeling some sense of lethargicness, and you don't know what it is. You just feel super tired, and you just feel emotionally depleted. And this is when Satan overwhelms us. He does not fight us when we are strong. He waits till you've gotten disappointed because the first request didn't happen. And he waits till you get disappointed to where your second request didn't happen and he convinces you that you've been wasting your time going to a God that doesn't hear you that's not listening to you and some of you it's not that you don't know prayer works it's just that you're tired of even thinking about it you're just worn out from your experiences but what you need to pray is this simple prayer is Lord give me the stamina somebody say Lord give me supernatural stamina let me tell you this, Eric Mason says this, and I think it's worth writing. He says, those who are not praying are playing. And the people who are not praying are straying. Those who are not praying are playing. And those who are not praying are straying. I want to encourage you as you are in this season of what we call saturation and setting your side setting yourselves apart to pray, know that delayed answers oftentimes set the heart searching for itself and leads to contrition and spiritual reformation, which is simply saying this, when God doesn't answer our prayers oftentimes, it forces us to start making up new ideologies about what we feel about prayer. When God doesn't move in the way that we desire for him to move, it makes us start feeling a certain way about prayer. And this is what Satan utilizes, is he utilizes unanswered prayers to stop us from getting answered prayers. He uses unanswered prayers to get us from stop. So here it is. I was counseling a group of four um, executives, and one of them said this, I don't believe that God is interested in my little prayers. There's so many other things that God is concerned about, people who are really sick, people in impoverished countries. And I said this to him, I said, if you believe God is not interested in hearing your small prayers, then you won't talk to him enough about small things to have confidence that he wants to hear you when the big things happen. And it is important for you and I not to let the enemy convince us that God is not interested in you approaching him because your perspective matters in when you pray if you feel that you're a burden to God you will not go to God if you feel like you're a nuisance to him you will not go to him if you feel like he's too busy you will not attend to him if you feel like he has other things to do you will not value the moment that you have to communicate with him Daily, God is looking for you and I to say something. Daily, God is looking for you and I to communicate something to him. Daily, God is looking for you and I to interact with him. And the more that we convince ourselves that he's not interested in me, he doesn't want to have anything to do with me, you're missing it. You need to understand this, that you and I don't work for God's love. We work from God's love. We don't work for God's love. 
we work from God's love. We don't work for God's love. We work from God's love. If you pray for God's love, you're missing it. We pray from God's love. We know God cares about us, so we don't have to spend the first 20 minutes getting God to believe that he loves us. God, you know I'm not right. You know I'm not perfect. You know I'm not. He already knows. You're not coming to God for his love. You're coming to God from his love. And when you come to God with that approach, when you come to God with that respect, you approach him differently. Psalm 28, Proverbs 28, one says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. When they come, they come with faith because they know how they're approaching God. It is critically important, y'all, that we know how to approach God boldly. We need, we need to know how to approach God boldly. So I'm going to close with this illustration. Melvin, give me a chair. Uh, give me one chair. Yeah, you can use a stool. Thank you. Use a stool. So here, here, here's what I want you to see. Here's what I want you to see. Here's what I want you to see. Ephesians 1 says this. We are seated with God in heavenly places. We are seated with God in heavenly places. When, when I communicate with God, I'm communicating with God from this perspective. I, this is the seat that I occupy. This is where God is. God wants to hear from us. God wants to know about your day. God wants to know about your week. God wants to know about how things are going in your world. And most of us, what we've done is we vacated our seat. We felt that you're not worthy. You're not worth sitting here. You don't belong here. You don't deserve to be here. And you've communicated yourself outside of God's presence. And now when God is looking for you, you're no longer in your seat because you've convinced yourself that you don't belong in that space. Well, I want you to know to take your seat back because there is a seat that God has reserved for you and he wants to hear from you and you've talked yourself out of that seat and now it's hard to pray to God from down there, but it's easy to communicate to God when I know I'm seated next to him and it's all about perspective. If I know that I'm close to God, I will talk to him, but if I feel like I'm far from him, I won't even communicate with him. And most of you have communicated to yourself. You've convinced yourself that you don't belong in this seat. Well, that's what the enemy wants to do to you. He wants you to believe that there are other people that are more qualified to be in this seat. There are other people that are better to talk to God than you. And you spend all your time trying to get other people to talk to God when God is looking for you in your seat. There's empty seats all in the heavenlies that you need to occupy. There's empty seats all in the heavenlies that we vacated because we don't feel like God is listening to us. We don't feel like God cares about us. And God is sitting there wondering, when are you going to take your seat back? I need you in that seat because you set dominion from this seat. It is a different perspective from this seat. When you sit in this seat, you don't pray like people that are down there. You look at God and say, God, you see what I see. You know what I know. You understand what I understand. But when you're on the bottom, them, you start asking God, God, will you make a way? Will you bring me out? I don't know if you'll do it. I don't know how you'll do it. I don't know how you'll grace me. But when you sit in this seat, even when God tells you no, you're close enough to put your head on his shoulders and cry yourself to sleep because you understand that you're not too far from God. But when you're down there, it's hard to lay on God when you're far away from God. It's hard to lay on God when you're far from him. And you need to take your seat back. I don't care what made you think you weren't qualified. I don't care what made you think you don't deserve to be there. I don't care what made you stray away from it. And just because it didn't work the first time doesn't mean you don't go a second time. And just because it don't work a second time doesn't mean you don't go a third time. And just because it don't work a third time doesn't mean you don't go a fourth time. Because some of us are six and seven prayers away from answers. We're eight and nine prayers away from answers. We're 10 and 11 prayers away from answers but men shall pray and faint not it's not about the length of your prayer it's not about the longevity of your prayer 
but it's about the death of your prayer. If you cry out with your heart, God hears you more than the person that says 80,000 words. If you cry out with your heart, Lord, I need you more than ever. God hears you more than the person that says, oh, eternal God, our Father, we bless you, we honor you, we magnify you. If you lift up your hands, say, God, I need stamina. I'm tired. The enemy's attacking me. I don't have enough strength to pray for myself. Give me supernatural stamina. God, will give you what you need but you got to take your seat you got to take your seat you got to occupy your seat nobody can sit in the seat but you come here lucky go come here let's swap seats so so now what we do is we put lucky in the seat and lucky sit down and lucky melvin say right there and, and, and God is looking at Lucky and saying, Lucky, I appreciate you being there. But there's nothing like talking to Melvin. I appreciate you standing in the gap for, for Melvin, but there's, there's nothing like talking to Melvin. I appreciate, so God's spending all his time trying to convince Lucky to get out the way. And some of you, the only reason why you can't go to God is because you made somebody else your God. And God has to cut them out your life. So you can realize that, you know what, it's good to go to other people for prayer. It's good to get them to intercede for me. It's good to get them to pray for me. But ain't nobody going to talk to God like I'm going to talk to God. Ain't nobody going to express it like me. Ain't nobody going to share it like me. Ain't nobody going to tell it like me. Ain't nobody going to affirm it like me. And there are many times where God is looking for you and I to occupy seat if Satan can get you to get out of your seat come here Jonathan Bravis P. Diddy Lorenzo he got that, he got that bad boy jacket on bad boy. Like, when the enemy comes against you it's hard to have confidence down there. It's hard to see God's hand when you're down in despair. That's why even if you can't say much, even if you can't do much, you need to learn how to stay there. You need to learn how to stay there. Because when they come against you and if you can't fight them you're close enough to hide behind your help see the problem is is most of you are sitting out in front and you're fighting a battle but you're so far from God you don't got no support but it's another thing when you're close to God and the enemy comes, you're like, oh, this is all y'all got? I'm good. I'm going to back up over here and let the Lord fight my battle. That's why you can't be still because you're so far from him. And when you're close to God, you understand that I can be still and know that God will fight for me because I can be still. So church, if you don't know what to pray in this season, just say, Lord, give me the stamina to pray. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but it can be powerful. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it can be used by God. God wants to hear every little thing. You know, work was terrible today. They prejudged me, they fired me, and I'm angry about it. And sometimes, when you're up here praying, your perspectives are different. Some of you are praying too low. You got to come up a little higher and see things. 
when you pray at this level, you see things that others don't see. When I was standing up here, I saw a man running down the aisle, and I saw him running, running, running. Most of y'all didn't see him running. He was coming to the second row. But I saw him because I was higher up. By the time you recognized he was coming, he was already on your side. But when you learn how to pray at higher levels, you can see things coming before they come. You can see things that are coming before they come. And I encourage you today to take your seat. Don't let nobody take this seat for you. Because it's got your name on it. It's designed for you. It's only for you. Don't let your wife take this seat. Don't let your pastor take this seat. Don't let your deacon take this seat. Take your seat. It's been a while. It's been a while. I know, we all get tired. and We run out of things to say, so we don't say anything at all. But even when you don't have anything to say, learn how to just lay in his presence. I ain't got nothing to say, but I'm here. It is better that you check in and just say, I'm here, than to stay away and not say nothing at all. It is better just to check in and say, I just want to let you know, I don't have much to say, but I'm here. Because I feel bad for you that are down here. You can't win fighting down here. Condemnation, rejection, this is where all of this sits. And before you know it, you'll separate yourself from everything because you stay too low too long. Get back up. Get in your seat. It don't matter how long it's been vacated. It's still empty waiting for you. By your hands, let's pray. Thank you.